Hello, and welcome to this Embarcadero Technologies Data U conference. Now, my name is Anil Mahadev, and I'm the Solutions Architect for Embarcadero Technologies. Today's presentation is going to be focusing on data modeling, source control, demystified. In this presentation, uh, we are going to be talking about the power and the value of securing your data models with source control. So with that, let's get started. Here's a little bit of information about myself. I'm the Solutions Architect and a Database Professional here at Barcadero Technologies. I'm, I have been an active uh, member of the uh, user group community for quite a while. I have participated in, in the inception and growth of some of these user groups uh, ranging from the uh, IBM DB2 user group to attending various conferences uh, held by the International DB2 user group and the DB2 user group here in India. I have been a six-time uh, IBM uh, champion in the area of the uh, data management platform uh, from India. And when I'm not working, I cherish my time by spending uh, a lot of, uh, of interest in the, uh, in the areas of history. I'm an avid foodie and I love to play uh, uh, video games on the uh, PS3 and, and the Xbox. You can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is uh, SQL Server Cowboy. And uh, we will now begin the presentation. So what's the agenda that we are going to be learning uh, today? I want to take you uh, through a series of uh, a hands-on approach uh, towards source control. First, let us try to define what is exactly source control and where does the data modeling uh, security aspect fit, uh, fit into this picture. And also, we are going to be focusing a bit on the scenario and uh, walking you through a sample uh, uh, walkthrough through which we are going to be harnessing how exactly you can accomplish this. This will be followed by a, uh, a Q&A session and you're most welcome to be asking uh, the questions in the GoToWebinar control panel and we'll be uh, more than happy to uh, answer them. So when we hear the word source control, uh, most of the uh, community or the folks uh, working on um, in this uh, particular area think about uh, software being uh, saved uh, to a, a particular software configuration management and then also being able to make changes to these uh, programs or documents, etc. As per Wikipedia, they have gone ahead and uh, given us uh, this uh, particular definition of what exactly source control is. And source control is not new. It has been in the industry for quite a while. But in the areas of data modeling source control, only a few of the providers have been uh, emerging uh, over the years. Now let's talk about a little bit in the areas of uh, data modeling source control. Uh, data modeling source control involves the ability to perform the same aspect of the source code uh, uh, check-in and check-out process like you would do in a, in a typical software development environment. But here we are uh, just replacing the, uh, the code with the actual data model itself, which is nothing but a file itself. And then what we are able to do in terms of a data modeling source control, we need to uh, consider a few aspects. One is you need to have a clear understanding of of, of the uh, level of uh, security that you uh, would like to enforce in your data model and who has the rights or the privileges of, uh, of, of performing these operations.
In this slide, I talk about a typical uh, uh, graphical representation of how exactly a data model source control would look like. On to your left, if you observe, you have your uh, data model that you're uh, uh, using in your, uh, in your uh, data modeling uh, tool. In the middle, you have the uh, a gateway that will and that will have the ability uh, to authenticate and authorize those particular uh, uh, groups of users who want to uh, push these changes into a source control system. And the last uh, uh, image, you can see it's a container. It's nothing but a source control database that would uh, store this uh, information for you. In terms, now let me just go a, a little bit uh, deep into this. Here in the data model, you can see that we have the entities and the relationships. And uh, each of these entities and, and, relationship, uh, and relationships are created by their respective data modelers or data architects. Once they come to the middle layer, uh, layer of the gateway, they will be authenticated based on their username and they'll be authorized as well based on what uh, changes he or she can uh, perform. And finally, once those changes are done, they are put into the uh, source control database as a final check. Has this ever happened to you? Well, certainly if you've uh, ever been in the database or the data modeling uh, circuit, you'll definitely relate to this because some of this has actually happened when, uh, in some places and we would uh, not wish for it to happen, but you know, sometimes accidents do happen and we just can't uh, avoid them. But there is a way to, uh, you know, to, uh, 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 to take care of the situation and you can uh, definitely uh, see this in, as part of this talk. So with that, let's focus on a particular uh, scenario uh, that we're uh, going to try to accomplish in this session. Our goal is to have the ability uh, to maintain and secure data models. The aspect of maintaining and securing data models will definitely give you the benefit of uh, of ensuring that you have the uh, capability of storing these data models in a repository. Next is the ability to synchronize between an active uh, model which you're uh, performing uh, right now and comparing it with the uh, actual data model that has been stored in the source control. Finally, we'll uh, take a look at how you can implement uh, authentication and authorizations by, uh, by performing uh, certain tasks. So with that, I would like to uh, take you through a demonstration on how exactly these are performed. So with this, let's open up uh, our tool and let me give you an overview of what exactly we're going to be doing. Here you can see, I'll just maximize this a bit. We are having a data model that shows all the entities and their relationships here. And this is the logical uh, uh, data model. Here you can see the physical data model that has been generated for the same. Now let's uh, have a look at how we are going to be uh, implementing the source control for this particular data model. So let's go ahead and log in into our repository. You will see that we'll be uh, first uh, having uh, a go at the project center. We will go ahead and create a project uh, for this particular occasion. Let's say the data U conference project. This will contain the data model for this 
demonstration. As you can see, already we uh, have a couple of data models. Now let's go ahead and uh, hit on apply and say OK. Now we will go ahead and add this particular data model into the repository. Now in this uh, particular aspect, you will be given a chance to uh, choose where exactly you would like your data model uh, to reside. So here, in the interest of clarity and, and, uh, and convenience, we have gone ahead and uh, uh, added this to our DataU uh, conference project. You can edit any of this information that you wish. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So this uh, repository operation, it's going to go ahead and first get all the list of objects from the logical, the physical uh, uh, data models. And it's going to push these changes into the repository. As you can see, the way you can identify is by this lock symbol here. It will uh, give you the uh, no, the indication that this image, uh, this particular data model, sorry, has been uh, added uh, to the repository. Now, as per our scenario, we have accomplished uh, the first task. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can accomplish the second task. So, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this as a uh, as a named release so that this will enable me to make sure that my data model is not going to be changed. It's going to have a master copy of this particular data model. I'm just going to add some comments. And this particular uh, screen will definitely give you an overview before you actually go ahead and, and push the changes. And uh, in this aspect, it will give you a more detailed information if you want to drill down. So now let's give this a release. So let's call this a data U demo release. demo release and then let's hit OK so now let's uh, imagine a scenario that we've gone ahead and uh, and we're working on our particular data model and uh, let's say that we would like to uh, go ahead and uh, add some information here so let's go back and Let's say I'll go to the main data model and I'll go ahead and add an entity right now. So let's give it a simple attribute definition. Click on OK. Let's go back and edit this and call this as data U. Right, excellent. So now let's go back and uh, hit save. I suddenly realized that I didn't want to have this in, in this main data model, but I would like to go back to a previous uh, release. So what we can do is we'll go under releases and then we'll say get name release. So under this, we have the Northwind database. So here we have the uh, DataU uh, demo release. So what we're going to do is we're going to be saving this into a different directory so that we don't have any conflicts. So let's call this as DataU release. Let's 
go back here. So now we have this as the original copy. And then I decide that I would like to push the changes into the repository. So I'm just going to go ahead and say check in. So here we're going to say a particular comment added a new entity called data you. And you're even given an option to review the changes before you actually check in the diagram. So you have this. And even if you uh, wish to, you, you can even go ahead and generate a report. Or if you decide to change any of the comment and just say that added by Anil, for example, click on OK. So now let's go ahead and, uh, and explore uh, the third aspect and final aspect of the uh, data modeling security uh, section. I'm just going to go ahead and, and close all this. I'll bring your attention to the security center. Uh, getting uh, loaded. So here's the uh, uh, security center. This is where you can have uh, a, an entire project or a, a data model within the particular project at both the logical and physical uh, level to be assigned certain authentication and authorization. At the very root of any source control, data modeling source control is obviously the repository database. So this is a high level and uh, the one of the most, as you would call as a super user, uh, would uh, have all the access and privileges to this particular uh, database. In industry standards, it's always good to have uh, roles and, uh, and users being uh, given the ability uh, to perform these actions. We will go ahead and, and check out some of the next aspects one by one. So we have the manage uh, roles option. Once in this, the manage roles option, we can enable to add certain roles within your organization and have them grant the appropriate level of permission. So let's go ahead and explore this. If you click on the new button, this repository role, you can assign a role name. So let's say CEO. The CEO has access to the entire repository, for example. And here you can give a access and the, uh, and the granular uh, level of, uh, of permissions for the same. So here, since it's the CEO, we'll grant all the permissions. And I'll walk you through how exactly this can be done for individual uh, uh, folks and uh, those in groups as well in a moment. So now that we've applied these changes, let's go ahead and add another role let's call this as uh, engineers the engineering group can modify specific logical data models for example So we'll go to the uh, logical uh, main model and we'll just not give them the option to delete anything, but they can go ahead and, and create or perform any updates. So let's click on apply. Now the groups uh, section will give you the ability to add multiple users into a group. 
So, for example, in an organization, you typically have uh, HR, fi uh, finance, marketing, sales, IT, etc. So, you can uh, go ahead and add a particular group and then you can assign them. And even if you're having a specific uh, LDAP kind of a scenario where you can pull the users into your source control, that also is made possible. The IT group, and we'll add a couple of uh, folks here. Hit apply. If you go under users, uh, we would like to add uh, basically the the users whom you would want to have uh, gain access to the repository. Let's call I'm just adding a couple of groups here, uh, users here. So now let's go ahead and apply. Now, at any given point in time, you must have the ability to assign and uh, and remove uh, users from a particular group or a particular role. So let's say that we add a bet to the IT group. And then we add for the architect, we add Lori. And under the uh, data modelers group, we can add Diana. So now, coming back to our, our repository uh, security aspect. You can see under the available users, we still haven't assigned Beth, uh, Diana, or Lori to any of the available roles. But if you remember, we just assigned them to the particular uh, group, and they are added to the uh, particular roles. And if you go ahead and now add them in terms of giving them access to the uh, data modeling project in question, this is where you would be able to go ahead and do it. Here you can see that if you, uh, no access for certain people if you want to give. So for example, let's say that I'm removed totally under the no access. So basically I don't have any access to this. And then we have, uh, so this basically means that this particular project is off limits for me. And the next uh, diagram if I see here, I I would be uh, coming under the data architect role, so which means that I can have access to all the information. And you can even go ahead and add specific uh, granular level uh, permissions as I just did. And this will definitely help you in, in better equipping your organization with the uh, uh, right uh, users to uh, do their job successfully. So let me give you an example. So let me just go ahead and log out now. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. So now if I were to go and say get from repository and see that I don't have access to the uh, data U conference project, but I do have access to the data U model that is residing outside of the uh, of the of the model here you can see that if it's already been edited or locally being present it will create a backup for us so that if it's in a collaborative environment we can make sure that nobody else touches it
So here I have access to my models. All right, so that brings us uh, to the end of our overview uh, and demo of the uh, securing your data model through the uh, data modeling security by implementing a repository uh, solution. And let us now uh, uh, take some questions from the audience, please. So thank you once again for attending my session and looking forward to uh, your feedback and, uh, and hope you all uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Pete asked, why is the default permission set to read requiring the admin to assign no access to restrict viewing? Uh, no access, ideal replies, no access is meant as a best practice in order to give you granular control. Alf asked, how would newly defined users change the password, or is it the admin that always gives the password to users? Uh, they can change their passwords in the security section, security center, sorry. Um, let's see, in this one, Anil and Ron and Joyce, there's a few more questions. Here's a question, couple questions from Rob, and I'll turn those over to you and some other questions, if you're still there, Ron. Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, I believe there is a way to report, but I don't have the specifics in front of me. But I'd have I'd have to look into the model itself and see, you know, specifically which uh, constructs we can pull out into a data model report. For the first question, that was Ron asking: Is there a way to report on access granted to models and objects? Yes. Let's see. The second question, Rob asks: Can a particular user profile of access be replicated for a new user. And that one I am not sure about. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't remember if there's a copy function or not. What version of Data Architect have the data modeling source code control capability? Yes, and I'm not sure quite what this is is driving at. Typically, people are using the enterprise version with the repository, but if you're using standalone, then it's a little different because in you need to have a repository to check it into. Uh, Bing is asking how to provide a report to show differences of various releases. What format is the report? Excel, PDF, or something else? Now, generally, you can go through and do a couple of different things. You can actually do model compares, uh, looking at one model version versus another one, and you can see that interactively within the uh, ER Studio itself. But in terms of the actual reports, you can you can typically push those out as uh, HTML reports. We also have a lot of macros in the tool to pull information out that you can export to Excel or, or other formats. Do we need to use ER Studio to manage security? What if my data models are in Erwin? That's okay. Well, Erwin is de is definitely a is a separate modeling tool. So if you really wanted to control them within ER Studio, you can bridge the models into ER Studio using the meta bridges and then you can control it in within uh, ER Studio. Roger's asking is the only way to keep history of model changes to use save as named release function question mark. At present yes but we are looking at ways to make that more granular in the future. Okay. Roger asks can the model be created out of an existing database and Joyce answered yes you can do a reverse engineer capability ER Studio, uh, which allows you to take existing database and create a data model from it. Rob can the repository be installed in a SQL Server cluster environment? I don't believe there are any technical limitations to prevent you from doing that, so I believe you can. Anil has just answered that as well by typing the text in. Okay, just, Anil just said the repository database itself can be installed on a SQL server, but the cluster setup needs to be done by DBA. Okay. Carl, how to deploy development and production models in a shared environment like this? And Joyce says you can create a dev copy of a production environment using the branch and merge capability. There is a presentation on this topic later by Francis McWilliams. Bonnie's asked 
asking, can you run global reports? Yeah, I'm just putting uh, something that the reports can run be run across on most of the metadata that's available. Okay. Um, do they, Alpha is asking if Apache or iOS or some web server is needed for the versioning. Can, can, is there a migration from Model Mart from Irwin to ER Studio? There are, I'll, I'll type the answer in in a second on this one, but uh, verbally, uh, the meta bridges do bridging from Irwin models into ER Studio data models, and there are also options in the meta bridges to pull some stuff, out, some information out of the uh, Irwin model marts across as well. Okay, Umesh is asking regarding reports, is there any templates for reporting and solution present by default? Can they create new templates? and save them for future use for reports. Hi, this uh, is Joy. Um, I'm just going to pop in real fast. And uh, we have a set of reports that are predefined in the ER Studio tool. And so we do have some reports that you can just use automatically that are uh, pre-set in the tool. Or we also have the ad hoc reporting wizard so that you can customize a report to your specific needs and save your templates so that you can reuse those for your future use. So the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. And I'm just typing that in, Joy. Great, thanks. Uh, is there support for Sybase AS uh, and, since and Sybase IQ? I would have to look into the... We'll have to get back on that. We support a number of uh, things with Sybase, and we just need yep. to look at the specifics. And Vanny was saying all models, and, and that Ron answered that. Um, Alpha is using, at moment, the ER Studio Data Architect bundled with Delphi Architect. So he's using the developer edition. Could the versioning tool be purchased separately, or does he have to move to ER Studio to get the repository? Right now, the repository works. He does need to purchase the full ER Studio suite. Yeah. yeah, the repository comes with the enterprise suite. It is not sold separately. Okay. I'm just going to mute Joyce while she's typing. She's typing with purpose. Yeah, and I'll add to that as well as if you're using the database tools, there is information sharing through Team Server as well between the ER Studio repository and the uh, database tools repository. Okay, and I, I skipped the answer that Joyce put. Uh, somebody, oh, so it was Sherry asked, is there going to be any topics on Irwin data model and repository capabilities? And uh, Joyce answered, at this time, uh, the acquisition of Irwin from Computer Associates by Embarcadero has not closed, so we're not doing any Irwin sessions specifically or any product or roadmap presentations until... Uh, that acquisition is done. So today and tomorrow are focused on the current Embarcadero database tools and technology. But thanks for the question. It's probably Cheryl. Cheryl. Okay. I think that's all of them. Yeah, there was that one. We, I don't know if we answered it. There was a couple from from Rob, and maybe we'll get have to get back to them. Uh, the report on access granted, who's accessing. I thought that was kept uh, in the repository, who was opening up models for data governance, but I, it's a vague memory. Where can the report be published? Can it be saved in the repository, or is it saved somewhere else, Joyce or Ron? It depends on which configuration they have. If you've got the entire enterprise suite with the portal, you can publish the reports out to the portal. Other ways you can do it is you can uh, take your reports, publish them as HTML or whatever, and then you can put them up on SharePoint or shared folders or, or wherever you would like to deploy them. And Anil chimed as well that yep. just in the base product you can save to your local disk and or map drives or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, everyone. We're Doing pretty good for the first session. Um, let me check on the time. We start, just a reminder, each session starts at the top of the hour. So yes. regardless of when we finish, we'll start at the top of the hour with the next topic. So, Okay, with that, Anil and 
everyone, Joy, Sron, Oz, thanks for the first session on the first day of Data U. Uh, Neil's email address is there, so if you have additional questions, uh, you can contact Neil directly.